not been easy coming all the way from that is January up to 25th of December. So without wasting much time, let me go straight away onto the onto I mean onto Skype and talk to Bishop Nathaniel. Bishop, good evening. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I think he, is he okay? Can you hear me, Bishop? Yes, I can hear you. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, hope you're good. Uh, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, Calvin. I'm doing very well. I have Officer Joel with me from Israel United in Christ. So we, we today, Officer Joel is going to be doing the reading for us, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we have so many things to talk about this particular evening, and I, I think you're ready. I look at, I look at. Oh, I'm very. Ready. I look at your body posture and everything. I think the two of you have. I can see Officer Joel taking, uh, drinking a, a little water. He's ready. He's poised for action. Yes. Yes, he's poised for action. Uh, Officer Joel, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Officer Joel. Christ bless. Yeah, and let me say good evening. Almost Christ bless you. Okay, let me say good evening to everyone who has tuned in this particular evening to listen to this particular program. Uh, this program is also being, I mean, recorded live. Uh, it's going to be put on the YouTube for you to for for anyone who is listening. Can the person can also uh, go to YouTube and watch the video. So we're going to do this from this time up till. 9 30 that we're going to pave way for the next program to come your way. I tell you, I'm a crab, I said, I'm a crab, 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 I'm a Zero two two six six seven seven one one. Now, if you have some more swine, maybe your phone lines. No, and I want to meet a friend. Now, what number way? So zero two four six six seven seven five six six zero two four six six seven seven five six six. Now, you know, I can't be near the Asada. I'm a trader. I'm pulling your coupon. Bishop, I want to give you first five minutes. The last show that we had, uh, I don't know. I want you to say something a little about the last show that we had. Uh, before we continue with today's sermon, so within the next five minutes, uh, let's 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 listen to you. Those people that weren't able to listen to the show, I want you to at least uh, let them know what happened, a little bit of what happened last time, so that we continue today. Yes, what you say? You yeah, want me to say something I'm, I'm about saying what? The last the last time the program that we had, I want you to I mean say something little about the last time the program that we have within the next five minutes, and we zoom straight into action with the, today's program. Okay. Um, well, as you know, uh, terrorism is on the rise. It shall continue on the, being on the rise, according to Bible prophecy. Uh, it's not going to stop. Um, it's not going to stop until America, which is called Babylon the Great in the Holy Bible, is destroyed, according to Revelation chapter 18. Um, blacks throughout Ghana, the west coast of Africa, north, central, and south America, the Latinos and the native Indians make up the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, according to James 1 and 1, Isaiah 11, 11, Deuteronomy 28, 64. We consist of the 12 tribes of Israel. This is the gathering stages. These are the end times, the last days for the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel, the people of Jesus Christ. That's right, the people of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is a black man. He looks like you. He looks like me. He is dark skin with white woolly hair. He is of the tribe of Judah. Okay. Now, many of us, our people here in America, uh, Britain, the Netherlands, even Africa of today are celebrating a pagan holiday called Christmas. Christmas has nothing to do with the Bible. Challenge every Christian out there to find you the word Christmas in the Bible. You cannot do it. It's not in the Bible. Christmas has nothing to do with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Christmas has nothing to do with the Bible. It has nothing to do with God Almighty. It has nothing to do with the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? You can find Christmas in Jeremiah chapter 10, 1 through 5, as a pagan, satanic, oppressive holiday. Today, it is based upon white supremacy. Christmas is used to build the economy of nations. Christmas is used to oppress the 12 tribes of Israel, according to the Bible. If we can read Matthew 24 and verse 14. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. 
And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. The gospel, as you all know, means good news. The good news is that we are the 12 tribes of Israel that Jesus Christ died for. He died for us so that we can have world domination. He died for us so that we can be set up on top above everyone and all nations will be subject enslaved under the Israelites as retribution for what they did to our people, as justice for what they did to God's chosen people. This gospel has not been preached yet. When this gospel is preached throughout the world, then shall the end come. You got that? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I. Uh, uh, Bishop, uh, Bishop uh, there is one thing I, I you, 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 you did talk about uh, that is Christmas. That I mean, there is nowhere where you're going to find that we should celebrate Christmas. Again, let, yes. let me let me let me ask this question before I, I would like listeners. If you are listening to me and you want to join this conversation, you can right now call this number 0246 677566. Again, you can also send your messages uh, to this WhatsApp number 0502 And I hope you and I are going to be blessed this particular evening. Uh, we're talking to Bishop Nathaniel. Uh, of Israel United in Christ with him is uh, that is Captain Joe Captain Joe who is who is I mean who is doing the reading for Bishop and I think we're going to have a wonderful time this evening uh, I've, I've been with this man yes, Officer Joel Officer, Officer Joel Officer Joel he gave, he gave you a high rank Officer Joel yeah Officer Joel yeah <laughs> Officer Joel I, 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 I've been with this man yes. talking about Bishop Nathaniel and I know the wonderful things that this man is doing so if you're listening it. we've been able to look back let me ask this question the last time uh, we, we, we spoke, we did tackle a little about uh, that is Pope. We spoke a little about the Pope. Today, about Christmas, many people believe as Christians, we have to celebrate Christmas. In your own estimation, in, 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 in what, what you've learned, in what you've learned within the Bible, why do you think it's not necessary for us to celebrate Christmas when we are Christians? <laughs> Okay, again, you have many black uh, pastors, Ghana, the west coast of Africa. You have many popes. You have a pope and you have many uh, evangelists throughout Vatican City. But none of them, listen good to what I'm saying. Let me per be perfectly clear in what I'm saying. None of them can prove to you Christmas in the Bible. In fact... There was one reference to the birth of Jesus Christ that's in the book of Luke. I want to read the birth of Jesus Christ in the book of Luke. I want all your listeners, get your pens and papers and listen good. Luke chapter 2 and verse 40 down. Watch this. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. So his parents went to the Feast of Passover every year. Watch this. And when he was 12 years old. And when he was 12 years old. They went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. They went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the Feast of Passover. So when was he 12? On Passover! When is Passover? The springtime. So... Ask your Christians, where in the Bible does it say Christ was born December 25th? They cannot find it. They will tell you lie after lie after lie. You know what? Christmas is used as oppression. It's, it, it's, it's the arm of white supremacy. Listen good to what I'm saying. Christmas is used. If you believe, listen good. If you believe that a white man will come down the chimneys of your homes to give gifts to your children, you are a fool. It is the same myth as if a white man will come to the sky and save you. If you ever see a white man come from the sky, you better run and head for the hills because you're going into slavery. <laughs> Get me uh, uh, Peter, First Peter chapter one or Titus one fourteen. Give me that. Titus one fourteen. Watch Kelvin. Can you hear me, Kelvin? Yes, I'm here. I'm listening to you all. Well. Okay, sure. I want y'all. I want your listeners to go to Titus chapter one and verse fourteen. The book of 
the book, book of Titus, chapter 1, verse 14. Not giving heed to Jewish fables. Don't give heed to Jewish fables. Jewish fables, for example, Christmas is a Jewish fable. Another word for fable is lies. Okay? The Bible says don't give heed to Jewish fables. Go ahead. And commandments of men. Because Christmas is a commandment of men. what man? The white man. Go ahead. That turn from the truth. Following Christmas will turn you from God's truth. Go ahead. Unto the pure. All things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. Give me Second Peter's 1.16. Also, Calvin, if you ever examine the Netherlands, they celebrate Christmas too. However, in the Netherlands, Santa Claus does not have elves. He has slaves to help him make toys. The custom of Christmas from the Netherlands is in honor of the white man conquering the Moors in Spain, Rome, Italy, Portugal. That is the custom of Christmas in the Netherlands. But America and Africa decided, the white man said, don't make the Santa's helpers slaves, give them elves. That's what they did. Watch this. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. Christmas is a cunningly devised fable. A lie. Go ahead. When we may know unto you the Lord power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we're honest of his majesty. Now watch this. Let's get to the nitty gritty, Kelvin. Let's get to the nitty gritty. If we can go to Jeremiah chapter 10, because I said that you can read about Christmas in Jeremiah 10. Watch what God says about this ancient and evil custom. Watch what he says. Jeremiah 10 verse 1. Hear ye the word? Which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. So, the Israelites were to go into the Babylonian captivity. God told Jeremiah to teach the Israelites not to learn the customs of the heathen. The word heathen means nations, okay? What nation were we going into captivity under? Babylon. Watch what he says. And be not dismayed. At the signs of heaven. The signs of heavens are the shooting stars. Go ahead. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Go ahead. For the customs of the people are vain. The customs of the people are vain. The word vain means lies. The customs of the people are lies. Watch this. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. Hmm. And one of these lying customs is that somebody cuts a tree out of the forest. Go ahead. The work of the hands of the workman. With the axe. So a guy gets the axe and cuts down a tree. What do they do with this tree? What? They deck it with silver and with gold. They decorate the tree with silver and with gold. Go ahead. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it move. Then they fasten the tree with nails and hammers so that the tree does not move to the left or to the right. Go ahead. They are upright as the palm tree. They are upright as the palm tree. Because in ancient Babylon, this celebration was done with palm trees. Here in America and the Netherlands, they use the evergreen tree. But it's the same custom. Go ahead. But speak not. They must needs to be born. The tree needs to be carried. Because they cannot go. Because the tree cannot go to the left or right. It cannot move. So... In the book of Jeremiah, Kelvin, God tells us, the Israelites, don't learn that custom. You mean these theological, theology degree pastors never read this? They've read it, and guess what? They've been taught by America, Britain, you can get paid on this day. Use this day to get paid by the people. That's what they have done. These Christian pastors who've gone to theology school are agents of the state. Listen good. Agents of Satan. Devil. Now, I'm not talking about these little sidebar people who learn from TV. They don't know anything. They just do what they see other pastors do. But the ones who go to school, who sit down and study day after day, night after dot night, they've read this. And they have been taught to reject it and use this holiday to get paid. You understand what I said, Kelvin? Yes, uh, Bishop, Bishop, I, I do understand what you're saying, but I have a question for you. Bishop, yes. let me ask this question. How did the Israelites come to start celebrating Christmas? And why okay. is it so popular around the world? Yes. Well, the Israelites 
back in ancient times when you read Jeremiah 10. That's when it began. Okay. So now, but let's bring it up to today because I want the people to understand that the Bible is real. Many times people like to keep the Bible in ancient times so that they can disassociate it. But no, you got to bring it up to today. When you bring it up to today, Kelvin, the Israelites here in America, first and foremost, we were taught Christmas by the heathen. What heathen was Christmas as slaves? The white man. He taught us on December 25th that that is the birthday of our Lord Jesus Christ, the white man, and that we must give gifts and candy to one another. That's what he taught us from slavery, from the 1500s all the way up, and we have kept it as an on. Can you get me that in Wisdom of Solomon 14, 16? Watch this. Listen good to this, Kelvin. Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, chapter 14 and verse 16. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong was set as a law. Let me say that again. It says, thus, in process of time, an ungodly Angel. custom grown strong was kept as a law. Go ahead. And graven images were worshipped by the commandments of kings. Yeah, they set up trees in honor of the birth of Jesus. But it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ, Calvin. Hey, Calvin, can you see this book right here? They're holding up. Uh, Bishop, I can see it, but I, I, I believe my listeners. Let me, let me read what is on the, on the, the, the two, uh, Babylons. Uh, yes. That is, that is can what you I, see the author? Yes. Uh, that is uh, what the power worship. Yes. Oh, the author is here at the bottom. Let me get it. Oh, okay. Okay, I can see it. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, see the see the author? Yeah, Reverend Alexander. Uh, his is what? His love. His love. His love. Yeah. Yes. It is Reverend this, Al Alexander Re His love. Yeah. Yes, Reverend Alexander His love. He did a study on the origins of Christmas because he says in a book when he read Jeremiah ten one through five. He started to do much research and found out it went all the way back to Babylon and Egypt. He said it has nothing to do with Christ in this book. He goes into great detail, Kelvin, great detail. So there's no excuse. And this is standard Bible reading in many theology schools, Kelvin. But the preachers are taught to disregard it. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Bishop, Bishop, I, I, I want the listeners to come in now. Uh... I tell for say who tie you made here. Oh wait me at 0246 67 7566. 0246 67 7566. And the church won't come on and no. And if I be Nigeria says he a deep brunya. But Bishop Nathan or that Israel United in Christ. I know. I'm here to say. Anyone say a deep Oh question be a. Oh wait me about how many snow busa Bishop. Bishop be you ano. Bishop the Israel United in Christ. I know. I'm more we are here for America to be precise. I wanna. I need Bishop. I tell you come on and enjoy. All the way from US and in any case, our angel 96.1. In T, who tell you, my name now, question here. Sammy, a beer on my truth for not to my bit me afraid. 0246 677566. Let me ask yes. another question if we have another caller. Then, hello, caller. Good evening, please. I'm Emmanuel from Paul. Yeah, Emmanuel, Bishop, can you can you hear me, Bishop? Yes, sir. Yeah, we have a caller on the line. He's Emmanuel from Paul. Ima, where are you calling from? I'm calling from a great junction. A great junction. A bishop is on the line. One okay, question. I totally disagree with Bishop on his argument that Christmas, because it has pagan origins, should not be celebrated. I'm, I'm coming, Ima. Bishop, Bishop, can you hear Ima? Yeah, I hear loud and clear. To start with, you see, when you look at our scriptures, we have Enuma Elish. Which talks about, which gives a Babylonian account of creation. We have Gilgamesh epic, which also gives a Babylonian account of the Norwegian flood story. Does it mean because of the existence of these accounts, what is in the, what we have in the Bible is not credible? No. The fact that we have Enuma Elish, we have Gilgamesh epic, with parallel what we have, the Genesis narrative, doesn't mean we should not believe in the Genesis narrative. Now, the second point, we have the Feast of Dedication in the Bible. Please, can you hear me? I can hear you. And I believe yes, the bishop uh, can The bishop can also hear you. 
So yes. it talks about the Feast of Dedication. You know, the Feast of Dedication isn't or wasn't one of the festivals sanctioned by Moses. It was instituted by Judas Maccabeus to commemorate the rededication of the temple. Yet Jesus Christ never condemned it, even though it had been instituted by man. And he himself will bear me out that the Feast of Dedication was celebrated on December 25 or 25th. So if Jesus did not condemn the Feast of Dedication, even though it had been instituted by man, but Jesus recognized its significance, there is nothing wrong with our celebrating Christmas, even though it's of human origin. Finally, the angels say, the birth, the news of the birth of Jesus Christ would be joy to all humankind. So that is the reason why we celebrate it. Now let me ask him this question. If there was, let's say, a cinema, and the cinema has been converted to church, does it mean we should no longer recognize the church? Jerusalem used to be a Canaanite city. Hello? Yes, you're on the line. We're listening but to you. When the when the Israelites conquered it, it became the city of God. So do you want to tell me because it used Jerusalem used to be a pagan city, it did not qualify to be a city of God. No. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So if Christmas used to celebrate a certain God, today it celebrates Jesus Christ. It's an occasion for us to draw the world's attention to the fact that Jesus Christ is a historical figure and by believing in him, you'll be saved. That's all I have for Bishop tonight. Yeah, what's your name? What's your name? I'm called Emmanuel Frimpong. Yeah. Is it the first time you listen to this particular program? Yes, this is the first time. And I believe I believe you're loving everything so far. Oh, of course. And so I love the analysis, everything, except that I disagree. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the that, so, that 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 is that is why opinion are like gnosis. I believe you've yes. you've 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 uh, put your point out. The bishop is on the line, and I believe the question right. that you did actually is going to answer you. So you can still go back and listen to the program, and I believe you'll be All blessed right. after the program. Thank, Thank you very much. You. Bye. Bishop, yes, let's go. Bishop, start with where, okay. start start all over again. Start all over again. Okay. Uh, where, uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word. Because you despise this word. Meaning, God says don't celebrate a custom with a tree decorated with silver and gold. Although God says don't do it, the young lady that just called said do it. So she is an example of one that despises the word of God. Go ahead. And trust in oppression. The young lady that just called, she trusts in oppression. The slave master white man gave us Christmas and she accepts it 100%. Go ahead. And perverseness. And Christmas is a perverse holiday. Go ahead. And stay there on. And she wants to stay there on. Now, watch this the young lady she also said the feast of dedication okay now when she spoke of the feast of dedication she was partially right that jesus christ kept it watch this i'm going to read it john chapter 10 verse 22 john chapter 10 verse 22 and it was at jerusalem the feast of dedication and it was winter and Jesus walked in the temple and Solomon's porch. So this was one of the only winter festivals, one of the only winter holidays that Christ kept. Now, when you read Leviticus 23, the young lady was correct. It's not found in Leviticus 23. It is found in the book of Maccabees, 1st Maccabees chapter 4, 2nd Maccabees chapter 5, and you can also read it in Daniel chapter 11, verse 30 down. So it is in the Bible, and Jesus Christ himself, I want your listeners to listen good. Read it again. This is the winter holiday Jesus Christ celebrated. John 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of Dedication, it, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Okay, so the young man that called, okay, the young man that called understood that you will never find in the Bible. Ask your callers, remember, show me Christmas to be celebrated in the Bible. It's not in there. Now, the young man also mentioned the the, Gil, the Gilgamesh epics and things of that nature. We're not dealing with the Gilgamesh epics or the Kebra in the grass. We're talking about 
the holy and divine word of the most high, the supreme being, not the Gilgamesh epics. We're not dealing with that. That never came out of my mouth. OK, and it's not like we don't know. But we are aware of it, but it's not God ordained. OK, so now watch this. Give me Colossians two, verse eight. No, give me Luke two and eight. Luke about the, the shepherds in the grass, the shepherds in the field. That's what I want. Watch this. Luke. Chapter 2, verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field. There were shepherds abiding in the field. Go ahead. Keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So you will not read where they set up a tree and put ornaments on it and said, oh, this is about the birth of Christ. No, because in Luke chapter 2, it said, as we read in verse 40, it was Passover time. That was the season. So the young man that called Emmanuel, excuse me, Emmanuel, who said we should celebrate it anyway, stop the lies. Stop the oppressive and deceitful lies, okay? We have to come back to what the word of God says. The, again, Kelvin, the only winter holiday Jesus Christ celebrated was the Feast of Dedication. And that was not a birthday. It was the rededication of the temple of God. That's why our people, the Israelites, celebrated it, okay? That was a winter holiday, okay? Yes, Kelvin. Yeah, Bishop, uh, le 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 we still, we still, we are going on the line again. We want more questions to come. I believe this show is going to be, it's going to be very interesting this evening because uh, I can see, yes, I can see the Bishop taking in water because we have a whole lot of things to talk about this evening. That's good, Bishop. That's good. I'm, I'm enjoying I'm the show. I'm waiting for a scripture. Yes. I'm, about I'm, Christmas. Have your callers give us a scripture about Christmas, please. Uh, they, they, they will come in. They will come in. 0246 <laughs> 0246 Before I call that comes in i have a question for you what is santa claus that is saint nicholas all about what is santa, santa claus, claus. Yeah. santa claus santa claus well many people say it is saint but when you look at the letters s-a-n-t-a -A, when you switch the a and the n you get satan that's what you get road scholars understand understand that santa is really satan it is a demonic figure okay now it is based on historically upon an ancient man called Saint Nicholas in Russia who did give gifts on Hanukkah to the Israelites that ruled in Russia during the Dark Ages. That's another history most people don't know about, okay? But the white man likes to take historic things and twist and turn them and change them to fit him. So he incorporated that with the birth of Nimrod Put it together and said, Jesus Christ was born. No, 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 no. You must research this stuff. And your research must begin with the Bible. The Bible says, don't celebrate it. So when your listeners say, we are going to celebrate it, that's why they suffer poverty. That's why they suffer plagues. That's why they suffer sickness. That's why they suffer dysfunctional families. That's why their countries are in disarray because of these white man lies. They keep pushing on the people. Now what? <laughs> Bishop, 0 We want more callers to come in with their questions, and I believe the bishop is ready to answer their questions. Hello, good evening, caller. Yeah, good evening. Uh, is this Angel? Yeah, this is Angel FM. Your name and where you calling from? Uh, I am not in Ghana. I'm in England. My name is Dion. You, you, you are not in Ghana. Where are you calling from, please? I'm in England. I'm in London. You are in London. Uh, Bishop, can what's yeah. your what's your name, please? My name is Dion. Oh, okay, Bishop. I hope you can you can hear the the, the lady. Uh, she's calling from all the way from London, and I I believe you want to talk to the bishop, right? Yes, I'm just calling to say that I totally, totally, 100% agree with what the bishop is saying. If we think about Jeremiah, the, uh, chapter 10, 
uh, verses 1 to 5, when they're talking about getting a Christmas tree cut out of a forest. Jeremiah is in the Old Testament, which is supposed to be before Christ, isn't it? Yes. So that kind, that kind of means now that they were doing that before Christ, which means yes. it's got nothing to do with Christ. Good, excellent. Oh, see, I love a smart woman. I love a smart woman. Maybe she could help the brother Emmanuel and just call help him. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, yeah, that's, just the point I, that's the point I wanted to make. Um, the fact of the matter is that the Bible is talking against cutting, cutting down a tree and putting it in your house and decorating it with silver and gold. And where you find that is in the Old Testament, which is before Christ. So that alone proves it's got nothing to do with Christ on his birthday so, okay uh, I, I believe that's 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 what your point that you wanted to make right that's it yeah and um, i want to continue to um listen in and all praises do and yeah all praises to god for giving me the Bishop Nathaniel, he's doing great work around the world. Thank you. Oh, okay. We thank you also very much uh, for tuning in to Angel 96.1. And I believe all the people in London who are listening and across the world, you always listen to this particular platform. It is the biggest platform in this country. So thank you for your call. And I, I believe the bishop uh, did us do also agree with you. That was the same point that the bishop was making. Bishop, let me ask another question before I go back. There's, there's a call on the line. Let me go back. And uh, let me ask another question before uh, we go back to the line again i mean does the bible say when christ's birthday is i want to know whether the bible say when i mean christ's birthday is people are saying 25th do we have anything in the bible that says uh, christ was born on the 25th there's nothing in the bible that says he was born on the 25th uh at the beginning of the uh show we read luke chapter 2 and verse 40 this is the only bible reference to the birth of christ i'm gonna read it now luke 2 and 40 luke chapter 2 verse 40 and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. So it says Christ's parents went to the feast of Passover Angel. every year. Watch this. And when he was 12 years old. And when he, when he, Christ, was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. That is the only biblical reference to any date around Christ's age. It tells you he was 12 on Passover. So that's the only time you read about the, any type of birthday or anything. But it was when he was 12 on the Passover. That's what it's telling you. Okay. And that's Passover is in springtime. Not the dead of winter. Not the dead of winter. You will never find where Christ celebrated his birthday. It's not in the Bible. It's not there. <laughs> As a matter of fact, Kelvin, yeah. birthday celebrations are all pagan. They never were celebrated by the Israelites. You read the pharaohs of Egypt celebrated birthdays and the Romans celebrated birthdays, but never the Israelites. Never. Yeah. Bishop, <laughs> Bishop, I have two questions, but, but, but let me see whether I have a call on the line. 0246 6775666 <laughs> yes. That's why I said you have two groups of church pastors. One is the ignorant group who just watches television and listens to what those pastors on TV say. The second group are those that have some type of scholarship or money and went to school under the oppressor, the white man, and learned theology day after day. Those are the ones who know. Your popes know. Your bishops inside the Vatican, they all know. Many of the well-educated pastors throughout Ghana and America, they know. T.D. Jakes knows. Kraft Oldala, he knows. But they're paid agents. Watch this. Watch. Bishop, 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 hold on. Yes. Let's talk to the caller when the caller is done. Because, I mean, when they are on the line, let's talk to that caller. Hello, caller. Good evening. Hello? Bishop, let's continue. I mean, we lost the caller. Let's continue. Okay. You got it for me? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you the two groups of pastors throughout the world. In Isaiah 29, what verse? Verse 10. Come on. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 10. 
For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and the rulers, the seers hath he covered. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Meaning the words, the vision of all that you see, Calvin, all that our people see is become as the words of a book that is sealed. Because the Bible talks about everything, but it's sealed for a reason. Watch this. Which men deliver to one that is learned. Which men deliver to one that is learned. That's your pastor that goes to theology school. He's the learned man. Go ahead. Saying, read this. I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. So you take the Bible and you say to these learned men who went to theology school, read this, meaning break this down, explain it to me. And he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. Go ahead. Now, he never says that verbally with his mouth, but you can tell by his response he does not understand what he's reading. Go ahead. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Then the Bible is delivered to him that is not learned, who has not gone to theology school. Saying... Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I am not learned. And he says, I'm not learned. He never went to school about this understanding. So those are the two groups of pastors you have in the world today. Those who go to the schools of the white man, oppressor, or those that stay home and watch television and quote and parakeet what they see on YouTube. <laughs> uh, Bishop. I, I, we will be going to New Year. We will be going to, I mean, Boxing Day. I have questions on that as well as for you. But let me announce my phone lines again. 0246 676566 as well as 0502 uh, 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 Bishop, no online. This will be to me. Uh, Bishop, I don't know. I, I heard it somewhere that I mean, Jesus was born in April. I don't know whether... Uh, was Christ born in April? Well, that's why we read in Luke 2 about he was 12 on the Passover. That's around April time, the end of March into April. That is the season when Christ was born. Yes, that is correct. Okay. So now, watch this. Read, I'm going to read no, Colossians 2 and 8 Bishop, for your listeners. Bishop, watch Bishop, this. Bishop, huh? please. I, 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 I want the questions as well. Uh, the question that the listeners are sending, I want you to also answer them for me because it is getting interesting and interesting. Okay. I mean, oh, there's a question I have here for you, and uh, it reads, uh, if I if I have it right, let me let me let me read a question for you, so that you can answer the question for me. If God tells us not to celebrate Christmas, then why do Christians across the world celebrate uh, celebrate it? Okay, <laughs> let's read it. Go go back to Col go Colossians two and eight. Colossians two and eight. Colossians chapter two verse eight. Beware lest any man spoil you. Through philosophy, so we're taught, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. And vain deceit meaning lies. H Hello? Bishop. After the traditions Bishop. of men. After the traditions of men. Bishop. What man, what man dominates Bishop. the world today? The white so, man. Sorry, Bishop. Let, let's catch yes. and hold on from you. You have a caller. Let a caller yes. ask the question. So that. Hello, caller. Good evening. Where are you calling from? Good evening. I'm calling from Adam Matthew. Yeah, your name? Your name? My name is Osinese Thomas. Yeah, I mean, Bishop is on the line listening to you. Ask your I, question. I want to ask Bishop, why is it that Christians all over the world celebrate Christmas? Meanwhile, we think it is not right to celebrate Christmas. So I want to understand why uh, is it that uh, Christians all over the world are celebrating Christmas? Meanwhile, we think it is wrong to celebrate Christmas. Yeah, Adam, so, Bishop, you had a question? No, I didn't. I can't. He's saying. He, he, I want to understand it. Yeah, I mean, but but I, Kola, did you listen to the program when we started? Yeah. Uh, I believe ask your question very clear for the bishop to hear you. Then he answered the question for you. Bishop, listen okay. attentively and 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 answer his question for me. Bishop, uh, Kola, ask the question once again. I'm saying that why is it that Christians all over the world are celebrating Christmas? Meanwhile. Bishop is saying that it is wrong. So if you give us a thing fast, really support it. Bishop, you, you heard a question? But yes. Isaiah 30 and 12. We read this earlier. Okay. Uh, hold, Calvin, hold, 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 hold on and listen to the answer, okay? Hold on and listen okay. to him. Bishop, yes. let's listen to you. Okay, Isaiah 30 verse 12. 
Isaiah chapter 30 verse 12 Wherefore thus saith the Lord, Holy One of Israel Because you despise this word It says because you despise this word Meaning we, our people despise the word of God, the Bible We hate it Go ahead and trust in oppression. You see that part where it says we trust in oppression? The white man, beginning with America and Britain, has dominated the earth. And we all trust oppression. We trust whatever the white man has taught us. Go ahead. And perverseness. And we trust in perverseness. And stay thereon. And we stay thereon. So that's Thank why you. many of us celebrate Christmas because we despise the word of God and we trust whatever the white man says. Hello, Carla. Good evening. Good evening, Mother. Yeah, your name and where are you calling from? My name is Francis Manibati, calling from Syria. Yeah, I mean, Bishop, Bishop is on the line, you can you talk to the Bishop. The Bible. It's telling or asking Christians to celebrate Christmas. Because Jesus Christ wasn't born on December 25th. He was born in April. I, 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 hold on, hold on. What's your name? My name is Francis Manibati, calling yeah. from Syria. Francis, yeah. let me, Bishop, can you hear Francis? Francis. Yes. Francis okay, Francis, let's go. Bishop is listening to you. Let's go. Oh, uh, in fact, no way in the Bible is telling or asking Ghanaians or Christians to celebrate Christmas. Jesus Christ wasn't born December 25th. According to the Jewish calendar, he was born in the trial. Thank you. Thank you very much for your for your call. Uh, I believe the bishop heard you clear. Uh, and let me ask this yes. question. Bishop, let me ask this question before you go back onto the phone lines. Should we celebrate Boxing Day and New, Year, New Year's Day? What is what is their origin? Ah, uh, <laughs> Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Uh, when you go to Deuteronomy 16 and 1, watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 1. <clears throat> Observe the month of Abib. The Bible says, observe the month of Abib. Okay? And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. And keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. Now, when you precept that with Exodus 12, now the subject was the month of Abib. And keep Passover. Passover was in the month of Abib. Watch this in Exodus 12, verse 2. Exodus chapter 12, verse 2. This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. So, the first month of the year is a bib. The word a bib is a Hebrew word that means ear of corn, which is spring. So, the first spring month is the beginning of the year with God. But America and Britain has taught us not to celebrate anything. God says they have taught us to be under a satanic spell. That's what Christianity is. Watch this, Kelvin. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25. Because although God says a bib is the first month of the year, which is spring, America says no, it's January 1st. Watch this, New Year's. Daniel 7 25. Listen. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. And he shall speak great words. Against the Most High. The he that shall speak great words against the Most High is the white man. Go ahead. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And he shall wear out the saints of the Most High, meaning he had us in slavery. We're the saints. Go ahead. And think to change times and laws. You see that part right there? And think to change times and laws. What man changed times and laws? The white man changed times and laws. How? He taught us that the beginning of the year is January. The begin in winter, when God says no, it's spring. He taught us that the day begins at 12 o'clock midnight, when God says no, it's the beginning of the evening. He taught us that not to celebrate God's holidays in Leviticus 23. He made up his own holidays, this white man did. So he's the guilty party that we all follow because we all love him more than God. In, in, very interesting. Uh, Bishop, uh, I, we, we still want callers to come in, and I believe the callers are still, I mean, uh, trying to come in with their questions. 0246 677566. 0246 
0502-667-7566 as well as 0502-667-711 0502 uh, Bishop Nathania out that Israel United in Christ I know any education come all the way from United States now and then uh, at the title of education once them say and what's the day Christmas and I say you can see the Christmas when he said and that 25th you know the end you know him say you see he is what about Bishop my answer say any Bible will be as I see the Christmas in tea who teach me the now who will question be a over to me the Bible Hello, good evening, caller. Hello. Good evening. Your name and where you calling from? Yeah, you're calling from <coughs> your, your name again? Okay, it's actually Peter. Bishop is on the line. If you have a question for him, you can ask the question. No, I don't have a question. I, want, I just want to say something about Christmas. Oh, okay. We're listening. Yeah. All that people are saying, you see, nobody said Jesus was born on the 25th of December. Nobody said that. And the Bible didn't say that. But what the, the reason why people are celebrating Christmas is that they use that day to erase certain things, that certain bad things that was going on. Ah, uh, let me uh, tell you something about even Ghana. Ghana, Ghana said something that we should do. It's a he didn't go to Sananopo on the 14th of February. He didn't bring Kuku to Ghana on the uh, 14th of February. The Ghana didn't harvest the first Kuku on the 14th of February. We didn't export Kuku on the 14th of February. But we are saying we should celebrate, we should use uh, 14th of February to celebrate Kuku. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. In fact, in Ghana, on the 14th of February, condoms shot in Ghana. So we are saying, so the government is saying that instead of uh, uh, observing 14 as this Valentine's Day, uh, uh, the day what uh, the day people used to do things that are not good, then we should forget about that particular that particular uh, uh, day and use that day to celebrate cuckoo. So if sometimes you can, somebody can and say that no cuckoo. I thought it was a book to worry, uh, like, the, the, they tried to argue that Coco, we shouldn't celebrate a, a Coco, we use that 14th to celebrate Coco Day, because Coco Day, we use maybe a, a for Valentine or something like that. How do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes, the, uh, Somebody say that 20, 20, Jesus Christ was born on the 25th. But those people who got Christmas, they also knew now, nobody should know that they, they, they are very intelligent, they know that Jesus Christ was not born of the first people. We know. But that day, we are saying that Jesus Christ was given to us as a gift. Ah, yeah. And I hope the people know that. Ah, yes, so on that day, we should, instead of using that day to do bad things, we should rather go to the church, pray. Ah, yeah. Yo, 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 yo. Ah, yeah. Yo, your point, your point is well made, and I and I believe everyone also did listen to you. You can also join by calling on this number zero two four six six seven seven five six six zero five zero two six six seven seven one one. Hello. Good evening. Hello? Good evening. Good evening, sir. Yeah, your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Yao from Daban. Yeah, Yao. Bishop is on the line. Talk to Bishop. What 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 I'm to say is very true. You know, believers, what is sometimes um, worrying us is that we don't pay heed to the Bible. I really support what you say. We need to really calm down and let him speak what God has placed in his heart so that we can really embrace it. This thing of Christmas, if you are talking about Christmas, why why is this Santa Claus coming in? If you are talking about the death of Christ, why is it that Santa Claus, they are all coming in. They are all pagan feasts. So we need to really pay heed to the things that um, our bishop is enlightening us, the, the teaching that he's giving us is very, very important. And then we need to really pay attention to it. Which I believe that when we believe this, we get into know when we get to know it well, it will strengthen us and then it will keep us our way. Not, uh, not for us to lose what God has for us in the kingdom. We feel that we will not lose our place in the kingdom. So we need to be very, very, um, uh, we need to be very, very vigilant on what he's teaching us so that it will be a blessing to the entire world. Thank you very much, sir.
Uh, thank you very much as well for your call. Uh, I mean, I think this is the last call that we pick, and I believe let's now go to back uh, onto Skype and talk to Bishop again. But this question I have for Bishop. Bishop, can you let us know uh, what are the holidays that the Lord Almighty have set for Christians okay. for them to follow? The holidays. Yes, yes. Also, let me let all your listeners uh, know my contact information is www.israelunite.org. That's my website. Um, you can also write us, I mean, call us at 718-303-9655 during the week. Now, the holidays that God gave us to celebrate, you read about in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Leviticus 23 mentions um, the Sabbath which is the first of all of God's holidays, which is the seventh day of the week, followed by the next holiday, which is Passover, also called the Feast of Unleavened Bread. You also read about uh, Feast of Tabernacles, Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, um, Pentecost, you read it, which is the uh, uh, Feast of Weeks, um, and a Day of Atonement, okay? That's what you read about in Leviticus 23. Now, then when you read John 10, 22, you read the Feast of Dedication, which is um, the holiday that Emmanuel mentioned earlier. You also have in the book of Esther, the Feast of Purim, okay? So God gave us many feasts to celebrate, many high holy days to celebrate. Now, watch this, Isaiah chapter 1, and verse 14, God got mad at the Israelites for bringing in pagan customs to his feast days. Now today, Calvin, we've cast off God's holidays and are celebrating all pagan customs. This is what God says about them. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 14. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. So God said he hates the appointed feasts that we have. So back during this time of Isaiah, we were bringing in pagan customs. Now today we are 100% pagan. God says, I hate your appointed feasts. I hate your appointed celebrations. God hates. Yes, he does. He hates these days that you celebrate. We must come back to the Bible. We must come back and do what the scriptures teach us. Before destruction comes. Watch this, Kelvin. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. Because many of your listeners may be saying, well, what is God going to do to us if we celebrate the pagan feast days? Watch this. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven. So, one more time, Kelvin. God says, come out from among her, my people, and be not cut off. And read that again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. See that part? That you be not partakers of her sins. Our people are partakers of the sins of the white man. American white man, British white man, Dutch and... and uh, uh, German white men, so forth and so on. Anything that our oppressor has set up to celebrate, we celebrate without question. So God says, don't partake in their sins so that you don't get cut off. Cut off means put to death. That's what that means. That's why in America, every Christmas there's a fire and the Christmas tree burns up and kills the whole family. And everybody goes, why did Jesus do this to us? Because you're breaking all God's holidays, all his laws. That's why you die in the house with your tree. <laughs> I know everybody mad, Kelvin, yeah. but I can't help it. I got to tell you the truth. Yeah, that is good. If I don't tell you the truth, I'm in trouble. Yeah, that's good. Bishop, let, let me let me also ask this question. I have we have almost about 30 minutes before the show ends, and I believe for now we're not going to pick any more calls again. We're leaving the whole time for you to just explain uh, as to one or two questions that we have in so that I mean listeners in the house can also uh get get at least one or two things from what we're doing. Can you please help us with this particular question? Can you please explain the law? On giving 10% of your earnings to the church that is pastor uh, because Micah chapter 3 says we should not rob God hmm very good very good let me let me let me let me show you something very important 
I'm going to go to Deuteronomy 14. Just give me a few minutes, Kelvin, and I'm going to explain the law of 10% of tithes and offering. Deuteronomy 14, verse, uh, is it 20? 22. Yeah, start above it. Uh, let me see. 22. Watch it. Deuteronomy 14, verse 22 down explains tithe. Go ahead. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 22. Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed. So it says, tithe all the increase of your seed. Seed, number one, go ahead. That the field bringeth forth year by year. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. In a place which he shall choose to thy his name. That was Jerusalem, go ahead. The tithe of thy corn. The tithe of your corn. Of thy wine. The tithe of your wine. And of thy oil. The tithe of your oil. And the firstlings of thy herds and of thy flocks. And tithing of your firstlings and herds of your flocks. That thou mayest learn to fear the Lord thy God always. Go ahead. And if the way be too long for thee. So now, wait a minute. We didn't read money yet. We read nothing about money yet. Now, Moses says, if going on your way to Jerusalem, the way is too long to get to the priests. What should we do? So that thou art not able to carry it. So that you cannot carry what? Your wine, your oil, your seeds, your corn, the firstlings of your flock. It's too much for you to carry. Watch this. Or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there. When the Lord thy God hath blessed thee, then shalt thou turn it into money. It says if the way is too far for you, turn all that you have into money change the corn put the corn in money the wine the oil the firstlings of, of your flock change it into money meaning sell it and get the money watch what it says to do with the money and buy up the money in thy hand and shalt go unto the place which the lord thy god shall choose and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusteth after. When you get to the place God chooses, which is Jerusalem, it says, buy all that your soul lusteth after. Go ahead. For oxen. For oxen. You buy with the money, oxen. Or for sheep. Buy sheep. Or for wine. Buy wine. Or for strong drink. Buy strong drink. Or for whatsoever thy soul desires. Or whatsoever your soul desires to buy with that money. And thou shalt eat therefore before the Lord thy God. Then you eat that which you have bought before the Lord. And thou shalt rejoice, thou and thy household. Read. And the Levite that is within thy gates. And the Levite, the Levitical priest which is in your gates. Thou shalt not forsake him. For he hath no part nor inheritance with thee. Does anybody notice God did not say give the Levite priest the money? He says no, don't give him the money. You buy what you got to buy and share that with the Levite priest. That's what Christianity does not understand. Now, I want everyone to listen good. Malachi chapter 3. This is the chapter that lying, evil, satanic white people have taught us <coughs> to give the money to their pastors. Malachi 3. Malachi 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye... Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me. Even this whole nation. So now everybody's nervous. Say, oh, I don't want to rob God. So let me give all my money to the preacher. Watch this. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring all the tithe in the storehouse. What is the tithe? We just read it in Deuteronomy 14. The tithe of corn, sheep, oxen, wine, corn. Go ahead. That there may be meat in my house. So that there may be meat, meaning food for the priests in the house of God. Go ahead. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be a room enough to receive. Everybody it. wants blessings because that's the part the preacher harps on. But watch this. And I will rebuke the devourer. For your sake. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. The devourer is famine. The devourer is locusts and grasshoppers. Things of that nature that devour your crops. God says, I will rebuke them. Go ahead. 
Now let's show your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. So what I want all of y'all to see that in the Old Testament, the tithing, the tithing was of corn. The tithing was of sheep and oxen. The tithing was of strong drink. Now, watch this, Calvin. Here's the kitchen, the catcher. Acts chapter 2. Watch this. I want everyone to listen good. I want distribute. It might be Acts 4. You know what I want? Mm -hmm. Is it Acts 4? About distribute. Acts 4.35. Acts 4.35. When Peter and the apostles got money from the people, watch what they did, Kelvin. Acts 4, verse 32. Go ahead. And a multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Verse 34. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Wait a minute, wait a minute. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, in Acts 4, 30 down, the apostles get money, money to Calvin, to the people, according as everyone had need. The monies was distributed. So we were all provided for. All Israel was taken care of. How come? Your pastors don't teach that. How come your pastors don't take that money they collect and give it to the poor of the congregations? How come your pastors drive Bentleys and Coops and Beamers and Benz and the people are poor riding buses and broken down cars and walk? Okay. Can anyone answer that? Okay. Then 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 let me ask this question again. Because we will pick two two or three calls because I can see this particular question that I asked. Uh callers want to also ask question. But let me ask this question before I go on to the phone line. 0246-677566. 0246-677566. Again, 0, 0502-667711. Uh, okay. Will these Christian pastors receive uh, that a special punishment for what they are teaching? the people yes they will when you read jeremiah 23 god is very angry with these false shepherds these false pastors verse one and two jeremiah chapter 23 verse one well, it might be 10 let me look uh so verse one and two Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Woe, the word woe means destruction to the pastors that scatter the sheep of my flock. Saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. See what God says? I will visit upon the pastors the evil of their doings. So God is going to give a special punishment for these pastors who read the Bible and manipulate the people into believing white man lies. Okay. Uh... Let me see whether I have a call on the line. 0246-677566. 0246-677566. Uh, Officer Joe, I, I will ask you a question before we end this particular show. Officer Joe, so you you get ready for my question because I'll ask you a question, Officer Joe. And I think you, you answer the question. Hello, good evening, caller. Oh, good evening, sir. Your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Al. Uh, to to the question, yeah, I'm... Um, <laughs> Wait, let me tell, just make a reference to James chapter 5, verse number 1. I, I'm coming, Yao. Uh, Bishop, can you hear Yao? Can you hear him? Very barely, barely, barely. Yao, Yao, can you reposition? Can add, um, James chapter 5, verse number 1. Is, is he okay, Bishop? Huh? Yes. I, I'm yes, saying, yes, is, yes, it, he can. We can add it to, I'm talking about the tithe. Okay. Uh, well, well, when we don't pay, the thing that we suffer as we believe it, when we don't do the right thing, when we are not paying it right thing, okay. what we suffer. We think that we, we fall in Malachi, in the firm, that is why we, we get it. Well, that is why we get it. But in the New Testament, if you don't pay tithe, maybe you can, that's why I give a scripture reference from James chapter 5, verse number 1 coming. You, you, you will get it so clearly that even cancer, what doctors refer to as cancer, in the hospital is because of this time that we have not been faithful to it. There are all things that we need to give aid to. God bless 
um, our, our bishop for sharing this great software with us. But we believe that we need to really understand the intent of God's way, what God wants us to do, what He expects from us, and not what we want to do to please Him. That is what we need to be careful at. I want to thank Bishop for this. Um, our team teaching, and we are really enjoying it. We God bless him and keep it up. Oh, okay. Bishop, I don't know if you were, you, you did not hear what you was saying. He's also, I mean, saying about what you also said. He's saying that, I mean, that he does agree with you about the fight, uh, the, the fight and everything that you talked about. So he's on the same line with you. He does agree with you. So, so let's see whether we have another call on the line. Uh, good evening. My name is Christopher. I'm calling from Dumanapo. He said your name is what? He said. He said your name is what? Christopher. Christopher, yeah. Yeah. Where are you calling from? Dumanapo. Yeah. Bishop is on the line. Talk to Bishop. All right. I want to ask a question. Bishop says January is not the exactly calendar for us. So. I am asking about uh, America Canada. What kind of Canada did the American use? Uh, Bishop, did you did you hear the question that he asked? And he asked, "What calendar does America use?" Yes, yes. Um, okay, so that's the question. We, okay, we, we don't have to do the Babylon or the um, Babylon calendar. So, which calendar must we do it? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, kindly, kindly, kindly be on the line and listen to the answer the bishop is All going right. to give you. All right. Bishop, he's listening. Yes. What was his question? He's asking about a calendar issue. Uh, then uh, yes. about American. Uh, what calendar does an American, the Americans use? Yeah. That's the question. Okay. Yes. Most calendars today are based on what's called the Gregorian calendar. Now, remember, the high holidays are based on the new moons because people can argue the dates of calendars, how it was moved here and there. But the new moon does not change. The new moon is in the sky. So you can count the days of when you need to celebrate. Okay? So now, uh, Kelvin, you said you had a question for Joel? When, when that is going to be on the tail end of the show uh, it's, okay. not, it's not a matter of a question I want to also I mean applaud uh, Officer Joe for a wonderful job I have the last question to ask yeah, so be quick be quick about it because we have so many so, callers on the you line know, so you don't follow that kind of calendar you don't follow Bishop did, did, did you, can you hear what he's saying he's asking whether you follow that calendar or you don't follow that calendar the calendar that we have in America is the calendar that we have to follow. <laughs> However, when it comes to God's holidays, we chart the holidays by the moon beginning with Passover. Okay? Like Passover is the 14th day at evening of the first spring month. So that's how we chart it. We can sit down, look at the moon, and count when is Passover going to be. Why? Because it's based on the moon in the sky. Oh, okay, okay, Bishop. Bishop, again, let 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 the listeners. Uh, I mean, you can tell them the contact and and everything. But before we do that, let me pick this call. Before we we, we do that, hello, good evening, caller. Where are you calling from? Yeah, my name is Francis, and I'm calling from Abuakwa. Your name is Francis, and you're calling from Abuakwa, right? Yeah, the bishop is on the line. Talk to the bishop. Yeah, I wanted to know uh, the details of this and whether it is about. Uh, it is not right for us to celebrate the birth of our Savior or he is saying that the truth is what we have on problem. Uh, Bishop, did you hear the question? He's, he asked, is it okay to celebrate the birth of Christ? Is that what you asked? Yeah, is, 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 is he having problem with celebrating the, 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 the death of our Savior Jesus or just the truth that we have a problem? Bishop, he's asking. Whether you have difficulty in the that is in, in in we celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, that is the question he is asking. If I have difficulty, that is if you have what? a problem. He's asking if you have a problem. That I mean because uh, uh, with the question that he asked is like whether is it good we celebrate it or we not. I don't know whether he didn't listen to the program when we started. No, I listen to that. It's like I'm not getting your argument well. So, so then listen to, so what, what answer, ask your question very clear so that he can get the question and answer you very clear. My question is, are you having a problem, for, uh, uh, are you having a problem that we are celebrating the birth of our Savior or you are having a problem with the, the teeth after this? 
Bishop, okay. did you hear the question? Okay. Both of what you said are is evil. Celebrating the birth of Christ is evil. Why? Because it's not December 25th. Jeremiah chapter 10, 1 through 5 says, Do not celebrate anything with a tree and decorate it with silver and gold. Luke chapter 2, verse 40 tells us Christ was 12 on the Passover, which is in the spring. Anything contrary to that is of the devil. So if you're celebrating Christ's birthday, it's the devil because Christ never told you to do that. God gave you 12 holidays, 52 Sabbath days, 12 new moons, and you refuse to celebrate anything God says. But you will look for something he does not say to celebrate and say, I'm going to celebrate that. That's evil. That's the devil. Okay. Okay. Let me ask this question. Uh, but Bishop, before I ask this question, uh, please kindly let, let listeners know uh, the contact if people want to ask you questions, if they want to contribute, if they want to do things, if they want to join Israel United in Christ, let them know how they can contact you. Uh, and that is the lines and everything. Okay, great. Uh, you can contact me at www.israelunite.org. If you want to donate to help this truth go around the world, it's Israel Unite at Yahoo via PayPal. Our telephone number is 718-303-9655. Okay, now, Bishop, Calvin, Bishop kindly, repeat, kindly, yes. kindly repeat, kindly uh, repeat, uh, that is, the, 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 the ways people can contribute and also uh, they, can, they can get in touch with you. Okay, you can contribute through PayPal at IsraelUnite at Yahoo.com. That's for PayPal to donate. Um, you can contact me through www.israelunite.org. That's my website. Um, you can call me during the week at 718-303-9655. Okay, now, Calvin, I want your listeners to listen good to the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, <laughs> verse 5. This is a parable that Solomon talked about the birth of Christ. When Mary and Joseph, when Mary was pregnant with Christ, look what the Bible says about his birth. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 5. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bear thee. So the mother of the Savior brought him forth under an apple tree. And as we know in the book of Luke, they went into a, a, a manger and laid him in. So the apple tree could not be in the dead of winter. This was the springtime. This was in good weather. <laughs> There's so many scriptures to, to precepts to show our people Jesus Christ was not born in the winter, December 25th. That is the birth of Nimrod, the Babylonian king. You can read about that. Um, you, the book, The Two Babylons, written by Alexander Hislop. You can read about that in Ezekiel, about Tammuz, the son of Nimrod, the resurrection of Nimrod, the boy king. Okay? Okay. Uh, so, Bishop, even if we don't believe in Christmas, are we allowed to accept gifts? There's nothing. Listen, oh, get me Purim. You know what I want? Perim. In the Bible, it talks about the giving of gifts, okay? Now, just bear with me a second. Let me let me try to find that. It's been a long time, okay? Bear with me a second. <coughs> it is in a book of es uh, Esther, chapter 9, verse 22. Watch this about giving gifts. Listen good. Esther 9, verse 22. As the days were in, the Jews rested from their enemies in a month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy. This is the Feast of Purim. Go ahead. And from morning into a good day, that they should make them days of feasting and joy, and of sending portions one to another, and gifts to the poor. See that? They gave gifts to the poor of our people. That's what we did. So yes, gifts was, gift giving was okay, but it was on God's celebrations, not on pagan demonic celebrations, but God's celebrations. That's interesting. Uh, uh, Bishop, 
we, we almost have like almost about 10 minutes for the whole show to end. As I said, viewers, our listeners, we have been, we've been, I mean, privileged to be talking to Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. We started this thing around 8, 8, 5. And I believe you've been, I mean, you've been listening to this particular program and I mean, you've been touched. We all trying to understand the word of God. As you know, without the word of God, you and I, we are nothing. So it's good that sometimes we, we talk to, I mean, the man of God that he always try as much as possible to educate us, let us know uh, that is the in and out that is within the Bible. So it's very good. Bishop, within the last 10 minutes, before we end the show, I'd like to give you the last 10 minutes, whatever you want to talk about. <clears throat> I mean, with the kind okay. of question that I wasn't able to ask and everything. I mean, within the last 10 minutes, whatever you want oh. to talk about, listeners are listening to you before we, before we sign out. Okay. Uh, January 1st is approaching and many of you will be celebrating on December 31st, New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve is satanic. The Bible tells you the new year begins in the springtime, which is between March and April. That's what God says. So many of you will be judged and put to death for disobeying the word of God. I also want to say that as we discussed on previous shows, that there are about 14 different African countries that have a colonial tax that many of them pay to France, Britain and even America. 85% of their foreign reserve are sent into the central banks of France, the IMF and things of that nature. So many of these countries, our countries are under a colonial tax. Even those who now have gotten their independence, listen good to what I'm about to say, the devil lets nobody go for free. If you think you are independent, like American blacks think they're free and independent. Listen good, Kelvin. Listen good. American blacks are not citizens here. Many of you think that we are citizens. We're not. We are what's called denizens. For example, the Voters' Right uh, the Voters' Rights Act of 1965. It, it is an amendment to Jim Crow. Jim Crow says that American blacks do not have the right to vote unless they can prove literacy, meaning how to read, unless they can prove morality. So the Voters' Right Registration Act of 1965 has amended the Jim Crow laws and they allow blacks to vote uh, within a course of every 10 or 15 years. Now, Congress here in America has to revisit the Voters' Rights Act in 20, um, 20, I believe it's 2020, they have to go back and revisit the Jim Crow law. Let me make sure I got that right. Okay, yes, it's around 20, actually it's 2031, I'm sorry. The Jim Crow law expires in 2031, so a Congress must go back and allow blacks in America to vote again. Okay, this is so foolish, Kelvin. We are not citizens here. We are all oppressed by America, Britain, Dutch, Germany, Russia, all the European countries are oppressing the dark nations. Most of us are the Israelites, according to the Holy Bible, okay? Throughout the west coast of Africa, North, Central, and South America, we are the biblical Israelites. Regardless of what false names we go by today, Calvin. Listen good, give me Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 37 about our names being changed. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. A proverb and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. This was a curse upon the Israelites that we would become an astonishment, a proverb and a byword. Means would we would be called outside of our God-given nationalities. The nations would change our name. Jump up to verse 33. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land. And all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not. Shall a nation which you know not eat up shall eat up the fruit of your land meaning your resources and thou shall be only oppressed and crushed always like for example south africa gives diamonds but they have some of the poorest the blacks they're the poorest people the whites inhabit and rule with a rod of iron they are wealthy all throughout africa they said without 
West Africa, France would be a third world country. But because they suck the resources from Africa, France is a world superpower, just as Britain, just as America. We are an oppressed people because we keep breaking God's laws, Kelvin. This is why we suffer as a race, as a people. Get me Zephaniah 2 and 1. What must we do in these last days? I'm going to tell you what we must do. According to Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather yourselves together. O nation not desired. So the Bible commands us to gather together. O nation not desired. So we must gather together as Israelites. Not as Baptists. Not as Americans, not as Ghanaians, not as Malians. We must gather as Israelites, keeping God's laws. That's where the power is in Christ. That's where the power will come from on high, and we shall rule and dominate this planet when Christ comes and destroys all your European friends. Angel. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bishop, uh, we, we, we will be going any moment from now, but I, I said I wanted to ask Officer Joe a question. And I believe Officer Joe, yes. whether you, can you hear me, Officer Joe? Yes, I can hear you. How many years have you known Bishop Nathaniel? Well, this is going on my sixth year of knowing Bishop Nathaniel and being a part of IUIC. And I mean, what can you say about I mean this particular group? Because I have also been part of you guys. Uh, when I when I look at the things that you're doing, if truly if you want to get to you really want to get very close to the Lord Almighty. I believe with the kind of teachings that you guys are doing, I believe it's always good you get very close to this particular uh, uh, outreach. It's very good. But I, I want to know from you, do you think what? Do you think the world is coming to an end? Say that again. I mean, do you think, well, the, I think world, the world is coming to an end? Yes. And if you think it's coming to an end, why do you think it's coming to an end? We eat, read actually Ecclesiastes one of four. It says, one generation passeth, and another generation cometh. But the earth abideth forever. Now, when you precept that was 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, the world itself, the planet earth, is not going to come to the end. But the world of the nation of Esau, meaning the European nations, America's world has come to an end. Britain's world has come to an end. France's world has come to an end. All the oppressors that oppress this earth, world has come to an end. And the world of the Israelites will be the next world in power, the next ruler of this earth. So the planet earth, no. That world has not come to an end. But the white world, the oppressor's world has come to an end. In a black, Hispanic, and Native American Indians world, we will be the next world, the beginning of the next power. I, I don't know, within, within 30 seconds or a minute, what kind of advice are you giving to you? I mean, because we have, this particular show is all over ac across the world. You have people listening from Europe, that is from Asia, uh, Africa, that is, it's, a, it's, it's global. Everyone is listening in a minute. An advice that you give be giving to everyone who is listening to this particular program before I come to Bishop Nathaniel then we sign off. Give a word. So, everybody that's scattered through Central, South America, Africa, all the coast of West Africa, you're the Israelites the Bible speaks of. The Bible prophesies that we will fall as a nation. Why? Because of our sins. Now we're in the days of redemption that God is sending his prophets back on this earth to teach the word and clarity, to go against the system that oppressed us, that colonized West Coast of Africa, Central Africa, European, Europe countries. Because at one time we ruled this world in righteousness. Now God is calling his people back again to come and keep the commandments, to do away with Christmas, to do away with New Year's, to do away with Easter, to do away with birthdays, to do away with our false nationalities and take on our, our biblical nationalities because according to the Bible we're the true Jews, the biblical Jews the Israelites that came out from Egypt Abraham, Isaac and Jacob we're the descendants of those people and we as a nation must keep God's laws without God's laws we are not a people but with God's laws we are the greatest people on this earth and the word is to come back to gather ourselves together O nation not desire and to listen to the words that the bishop is bringing out. Because why? It's inspired by God. Nothing that we are teaching is of our own. This message is by God himself. And we're just bringing it out. Clearly, giving the sense to our people. Because why? For a long time, Christianity has indoctrinated us and, kept, and taught us lies. And kept us to our true biblical understanding from our heritage. And we must come back to God's laws and listen to the prophets when they speak.
And that's the message to everyone scattered throughout the different regions that consists of what? West Africa, Central Africa, some parts of Central Africa, North Africa. Our people are scattered through the different regions. North America, Central America, South America. Wherever the slave trade sent our people, that's where this message will go. And when this message goes out to all the worlds, then the end of this world, meaning America's world, the white man's world, will come to the end. Then all of us will rule in righteousness under Christ. Bishop, uh, that is Officer yes, Joe. Sir. Officer Joe, thank you very much. I, 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 you know one thing. I, I, I I'll, I'll especially give you a call. We have to talk. Uh, God bless you. God bless you very much uh, for wonderful job that you've done this evening, Bishop. Before we go, before we go. So Ghanaians want to know when you're coming to Ghana. It is very important. They want to know. The last time I asked you this question, they want to know when you're coming, when Officer Joe is coming. But before we do that, let me say a big shout out to, uh, that is Mike, uh, all the way, that is in London. Uh, God bless, God richly bless him for a wonderful job that he's doing. And across the world, everyone who, who has contributed a little to this particular course, everyone who has contributed something to this particular course, we say God richly bless that particular person. We still, we're still doing it. We still want more has to come. We want people to join what we're doing because we're doing a wonderful job so when are you coming and also before we go try and give i mean true true let people know how they can locate you let people know how they can contact you and also how they can also contribute that is in a minute or two then we, we sign up then we go okay well lord's world life life lasts in 2016 i plan to come to ghana myself hopefully officer joel and and several of us come down to ghana 2016 after the time of passover now again you can reach us my website is www.israelunite.org org at the end org um paypal if you want to help donate is israelunite at yahoo.com um, if you want to call us via telephone, it's 718-303-9655. So again, so next year, 2016, in the spring or summer, we do plan to come visit Ghana. I want all of y'all to come. We gotta, If we got to go on a beach somewhere and have a whole open seminar, we're going to do it. I want to see you, Calvin. I want to see all of you out there. Okay? Yes. Okay. Bishop. I think all praises, all praises to the Lord Almighty. I think we'll end it here. And I believe I've been touched. People in the house that also listen have been touched. I believe you're going to do this thing again. We we always want to do this. But also, as he said, you and I have to also contribute so that we make this thing a reality. May the Lord Almighty bless you. Officer Joe, God bless you as well. Everyone who didn't listen to this particular program, I say shalom. May the Lord Almighty bless everyone. I'm saying, office, uh, 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 that is Bishop, I'm going to talk to you I'm going to talk to you back. God richly bless you. Shalom once again. Okay. All praises. Shalom. Shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.